infinite damage can't be more infinite, right? I mean, that's the entire point of infinity. Yet somehow, I figured out how to do just that. We all know Calero as the frame that can make any weapon an AoE nuke and turn all melees into a dopamine generator, because who doesn't like big red numbers? On the other hand, I'm sure you're well aware of Amalgam Argonach Metal Augur and its ability to make any dagger scale infinitely with armor strip through gas or electric procs. I'm sure you're seeing where I'm going with this one. Combine these two together to create a quartically scaling damage setup that destroys enemies. Add in his ability to give any melee all reds, and this just gets even faster. Doing that to Eximus units. If this sounds familiar, it's because I just covered this in September. But I promise you guys, there is a big reason I'm talking about this build again. Because not only has it changed massively, but it's gotten even better than I think any of us thought possible. And snare for grouping? No longer needed. Another quadratically scaling damage source. Yup, companion insanity. Well, yeah, like every other build right now, to be honest. Seriously, you need to see this. Amalgam Argonach Metal Augur buffs not the Argonach, but daggers in a very powerful way, giving them the ability to strip enemy armor. This does target their base values, meaning the at first unimpressive 6 per tick strip is actually quite strong. As this effect does carry over two statuses, grouping enemies together will allow both gas and electric to strip them very, very fast. For this grouping, we previously made use of Ensnare over Calervo's fourth, but there's an even better solution to this problem. Nautilus and its precept mod Cordon replaces Ensnare entirely, doing everything it could, and even more. On Cordon activation, the closest enemy within 30 meters of you will be used to determine where enemies are pulled, creating a point 0.5 meters away from you in the direction of the enemy. Shortly after, all enemies within 30 meters will be pulled 15 meters towards this point. At first, this sounds good, but how could it possibly replace the snare as the 15 second cooldown is quite long for a, at first, mediocre looking grouping? Well, in combination with Manifold Bond, Cordon is procced almost every other second. Manifold Bond causes kills on enemies with 3 or more status effects to reduce ability cooldowns by 3 seconds. As Cordon has a 15 second cooldown, getting just 5 kills will immediately refresh Cordon's pull. Considering that we do prime on this build, and even alone, our dagger has 5 different elements in its damage makeup, this is very very strong grouping that also works on Eximus units, making it one of the only sources of crowd control to do so. Our dagger we are using to commit these atrocities has been changed for a pretty major reason. We're using a Zaw, specifically the Bala as it is the only dagger blade available. The customization present in Zaw crafting allows us to purpose build our Zaw for an entirely status focused build, as base crit chance is irrelevant when we can obtain flat CC at values like 1000% from Wrathful Advance. I'm not joking by the way, stacking every source of strength, not counting Archon Shards, puts us above 1000%. That's crazy. Regardless, with the Bala, Quath, and Ekwana to Ruhong parts, our status chance is a base 32%. Weeping Wounds and 360-60 mods, creating gas and electric, will raise this to 230.4%, guaranteeing 2 procs per swing. Besides the incredibly fast armor stripping this presents, it also has a further use we will cover later. Hint hint, it's even more quadratically scaling damage. Stance wise, Pointed Wind is superior for its faster animations and higher damage multipliers, while our critical damage comes from Organ Shatter and Gladiator Might, with Condition Overload giving an average 720% damage bonus from our 9 different status effects present on this build. This last slot should be filled with Primed Reach. With larger crowds, which are commonplace with Cord and Spam, the low base range on Bala means you'll only be striking enemies directly in front of you, significantly slowing down armor ship speed and massively limiting our damage. With the added plus 3 range though, we get to take advantage of Dagger's very high follow through of 0.9, something seldom seen for a good reason. It's very strong, alongside the fact that more gas and electric procs means a quicker armor strip. I'm sure you're itching to know what I've got cooking for our third quadratically scaling damage buff, but for those who are unaware of what that even means, let me explain the first two. 
quadratically scaling damage sources scale off the amount of enemies being affected by them. Think x times 20 to the power of 2, where x is the damage being sent out to 20 enemies, with the power being because you theoretically hit all 20 enemies at once. The more enemies a part of it, the more your damage increases, and that holds true for both Collective Curse and Amalgam Argonac Metal Augur. Curse will redirect all damage done to any chained enemies to all chained enemies. Striking multiple enemies at once under this effect will redirect damage done to all of them separately back onto every chained enemy. Considering that our dagger is hitting multiple enemies per swing, and gas and electric do quite the same, this is a whole lot of damage being multiplied by 20. And that's just a simulacrum. Sure, you can't actually get infinite enemies grouped together on Steel Path, but they'll be long dead before you even have the time to worry about that, no matter what level you're facing. Amalgam Argonac or just gas itself is quadratically scaling as well. The more enemies you have grouped together, the more gas procs you can have compounded on top of one another. This is what makes the armor strip so fast in the first place, as we have 20 different enemies own gas clouds with a max range of 6 meters, all layered on top of each other. Combined together, we get Quartic Scaling, I think, which destroys enemies regardless of what you want to call it. With at least 145 strength, Wrathful Advance will grant us enough flat crit to get all red crits, and we're way higher than that with the final build. So we've got both Collective Curse and Amalgam Metal Augur for our first two quadratics. Our third though, is a relatively underrated arcane, Exodia Force. Overshadowed by its sibling arcane, Exodia Contagion, this one seems to have flown under many people's radar and is especially powerful on this build. Force gives a 50% chance on status proc to cause an explosion to emanate from your Warframe, dealing 200% weapon damage to enemies within 6 meters that has no cooldown. Force will scale off most things, stance damage multipliers, a weapons base damage, and elemental or faction damage buffs, with the combo counter buffing it in the same manner as pseudo exalts. What doesn't buff force are most other melee mods, condition overload, critical hits, or damage, and the likes. What makes force so powerful in our situation is the incredibly high status chance we have alongside the grouping, causing us to hit multiple enemies in one swing that, as you guessed it, compound force procs on top of one another at an immensely high rate. How could this possibly get better? I mean, we have octic scaling? Is that even a word? Who knows anymore? As I'm sure you expected though, the answer is yes. As our helmet slot was now free from ensnare, we could fill it with the last remaining thing this build needed. What was missing from our earlier dagger build? I mean, it is a dot focused setup, so you'd expect a bane to be used there. What if we could take that bane and not only apply it to our dot damage, but also collective curse? Roar over Calervo's Fourth is an insane damage boost for this setup, rivaled by nothing else. Functioning as a faction damage multiplier on weapons, it will multiply our final damage value with it being used twice within status effect calculation, otherwise referred to as double dipping. In terms of Collective Curse, the damage dealt to the target will be multiplied, for which Curse will then redirect at an increased value because War does buff ability damage. And remember, this can technically be counted as triple dipping since it will dip again on our dots and it is, it's a whole mess, but it is a hell of a lot of damage. Due to the immense strength as you'll see soon, this is almost a damage double for non dots and even more so for them. Build wise, considering the arcanes, strike is needed. We had no room for melee attack speed on the Bala build, so we had to gather it here and Energize is highly recommended due to our very low efficiency. Stupid high strength values like this aren't needed, but this is a maximum DPS setup. Do feel free to adjust this build for your own needs, as the mod configuration does not directly affect damage in any meaningful way for a very long time on Steel Path. As I said in the intro, I took infinite damage and made it more infinite. Somehow. Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude, Umbral Intensify, and Growing Power combined to give us just over 100% faction damage on Roar, and Curse's redirection also sits at 100%. As 1% strength is equal to 2% more flat CC from Wrathful, this means we get a final 686% flat CC towards our Zaw. That's permanent tier 6 red crits. Whoa. In terms of survivability, strength also buffs this on Calervo, increasing his overguard cap 
to 34,300. Enemies will barely even touch your overguard in the first place, but even if it was an issue, casting gives 1 second of invulnerability, with it breaking giving another 0.5 seconds. Overguard itself grants pure status immunity and prime surefooted effects, quite strong. Our duration at 154 increases Wrathful short base duration to a more comfortable 15 seconds, with roar lasting almost a minute. The slight increase in range to 145 is mainly for Collective Curse, as it can affect enemies through walls with a loose line of sight requirement, meaning you only need to see the enemy once during casting to link them. While we are mainly chaining grouped enemies through Cordon, any enemies within the Cone of Curse's effects will also be chained and subsequently killed. Even with Xenoric, the energy drains are just a bit too high at 45% efficiency, so Streamline raises it to lower our cost. On the other hand, our companion buffs aren't over. Tenacious Bond gives a final 1.2x increase in critical damage if our Sentinel's weapon is over 50% crit chance. Most Sentinel weapons have absurdly low CC, except for Volk Lock with a base 35%. With just Point Strike, this puts us far over the required value, giving us a permanent crit damage increase. The rest of these mods just contribute to Nautilus's survivability, with this last slot being open for whatever you'd like. Our primer for this build is the Epitaph, no surprise there I'm sure. Firewall gives a massive damage multiplier alongside obviously providing a massive damage boost through condition overload with Blast, Radiation, and Cold. Do remember that Cold also gives another crit damage boost here. Argonac on the other hand only needs the Amalgam mod, and of course Amalgam Serration gives extra spin speed, but that is optional. You will never fire this gun, so nothing else is needed here. Well guys. There you have one of the strongest setups I have ever seen in Warframe, being able to swing once at 20 Eximus units and kill them all is insane. It's funny, watching my old video where I rave about the insanity of this setup, not knowing what it would soon become. This may be the strongest we've ever been in Warframe. Thank you so much for watching, your support really means it all to me. Many more of those to all of my supporters on Patreon and YouTube. If you would like to go check them out, links are in the description where you'll find you get my videos a whole day early before everybody else and your name up on screen with these cool people. Thank you to Wally, Lyric, Scotty Nose, Sage, Intellectual, 3000, Eridus, and everyone else on screen of course. Your support is again very appreciated. I hope this video was informative and helpful and I will see all of you guys very soon. Peace.